know, the Bible is filled with sermons about difficulties, about trials, about how to face problems in this life. And Christ, although promises us good life, but part of the deal of being a Christian is, you know, passing through difficult circumstances of life. And we can find specifically in the book of John, the Gospel of John, this teaching starting John 14, where Christ would talk about persecution of the saints, persecution of the Christians. He would talk about trials and tribulations. You know, suffering is not something new to Christianity. We have in the Bible different occasions wherein believers experience physical hardship. Physical hardship from people unsympathetic toward God. Now in this passage, John 16 verses 1 through 4, even following, the apostles are given some hints by Christ about the gloomy side of discipleship, about the gloomy side of Christianity, about the challenging outcome in the kingdom of God toward the last verse of this chapter. And Christ reassures them in saying, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16 verse 33. Here, here is an important note. No matter what you are dealing with in your life, God assures us victory because He understands what we are passing through. And He would allow us to overcome not only because we're believers, but we are to be used by God for His glory. Now, part of the deal of real Christianity is the possibility of losing our convenience or the convenience of a comfortable life. And this should not surprise us, especially in our quest to partake God's truth and righteousness. If you will turn your Bibles quickly to 2 Timothy 3 verse 12, the Word of God says, Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ will be persecuted. Now let us read the text for the day. Let us turn our Bibles quickly to John 16 verses 1 through 4. Again, John 16 verses 1 through 4. And the Word of God says, I've said all these things to you to keep you from falling away. See, even before the disciples suffer, you know, Christ warned them so that they would not fall away. In fact, in John 17, Christ even prayed for the disciples, even us, the would-be disciples of Christ. He already prayed that we would not stumble under persecution, that we would not fall away. And He assures us by the grace that is working in our lives to, for us to be victorious over, over all sorts of difficulties. And let's continue uh, reading the passage. They will put you out of the synagogue. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. And they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. But I've said these things to you that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. John 16, 1. Let us try to analyze what the verse means. The use of the word distinct in verse 1 pertains to the hurtful things disciples will experience from the hands of the, of the ungodly people that Christ is talking about in John 15 verses 18 through 27. William Hendrickson commentary says this, Jesus has spoken in order to forewarn his friends if he had not made these predictions, they would have been caught unaware. If Christ did not warn them about the coming test, about the coming trial, they would have been, you know, disheartened with the Master, probably become disillusioned about the kingdom of God. But Christ never missed out. Christ never fails to inform His people regarding the important matters of faith, including this. And I would like to encourage pastors 
to do the same thing. Because in one side, we talk about so many blessings without talking about the balance of Christianity wherein, wherein Christians would face difficulties in this life. Yes, in one sense, the kingdom of God talks about the abundant blessings in Christ. The kingdom of God would talk about the blessings so full, probably even material blessings. But part of the deal, part of the deal of real Christianity is the possibility of being tried, of being tested, of being mistreated, or perhaps being tortured for Christ simply because they are still in the world and the world hates us and the world hates the Lord. But Christ once again promises and encourages us, encouraging us in saying, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Listen, in order to strengthen their resolve, Christ provides series of positive instructions. One is taken in John 4, 14, where he exhorts the believers not to lose heart, but to believe in God and to believe in Christ, to trust the Lord with all of their hearts and to focus their minds and their hearts on heavenly things or in the coming days wherein God would take us to his kingdom. And to be hopeful, very hopeful, because his departure, listen, his departure would mean an extensive and glorious manifestation of his kingdom through the power and might of the Holy Spirit. Now Christ is making a case, making his final appeal prior to his arrest and crucifixion in John 15 verses 1 through 17. Part of that discourse is the suffering this man would receive from the non-believing world. That you can find in John 15 verses 18 through 25. Now part of Christ's encouragement comes as a reminder that the Holy Spirit will be there with them even in their most demeaning moments. Where can you find that? John 15 verses 26 and 27. Here, Christ spells out the basis why he shares these dreadful projections. Knowing that something is going to happen makes it not so difficult to pass through trials. The fear of the unknown makes it so hard to bear trials and sufferings, the pain and all sorts of difficulties. Trial brain is minimized the moment there is a prior notice especially after knowing suffering is something that could be controlled. Suffering is something that we can overcome because of the grace of God that works within our lives.